Hey guys, we're in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. We're catching and cooking all the way through this whole park. This is a nice lake trout and we're gonna be eating them for dinner. Stick around. Stick around in this video, you're gonna figure out how I'm hanging off a cliff in the middle of Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. Hey everybody. <laughs> we got season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge coming up and it's epic. Beaver, bear, duck, grouse, everything. It's huge. But in order for me to continue making this content, I need to have sponsors. So guys, I'm gonna provide you a direct link at spons.org, the Wooded Beardsman. Use that link only. Download the video game. Give the World of Tank Blitz a shot. It's the simplest game in the world. It's tanks blowing up the tanks. Guys, there's new mad games on the Halloween mode. If you join now, you're gonna get read in on the action. These new tanks were designed by Peter Pound, the vehicle designer behind the Mad Max Fury Road, the film. You guys know that one. The Scavenger tank, it's the most popular vehicle in the wasteland. It's good traction and powerful engine will allow you to quickly change positions and dodge enemy shells aiming at your armor weakened by sandstorm. The Scavenger has two guns to choose from. Seven millimeter gun will turn an enemy into a scrap of heap at a distance and howitzer will help deal with enemies at close range. Gravedigger, high damage by ramming, thick armor, good dynamic and fast firing gun. It's all about the Gravedigger. Guys, you can download on every platform, iOS, Android, Mac OS, Steam and Windows 10. It's with sponsors like this that keep us going. Guys, the game is free. There's no cost to you. Just use that link and help me produce more content for you. Guys, I've got all sorts of ideas for season five of the Wilderness Living Challenge. If I can get a budget together, maybe Tropical, maybe Jeremy can go, maybe we can get a crew to go. You know, we're tossing around the idea of Granada. Maybe that would be fun. Think about it, guys. If I get a good budget going, I can go do all sorts of crazy and interesting things and we can start living off the land for longer periods of time. Use that link, download it now. I'm gonna track the number of downloads. Let's aim for 300. Can we get 300 people out there? Guys, if you download the game, leave down in the comments section that you downloaded it. I wanna know. Also, I want you guys to put down in the comments section where you'd like season five of the Wilderness Living Challenge to take place. Use my links, help support the channel. Let's keep this content flowing. Good morning, everyone. We are on our sixth day at Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. We're uh, getting a little bit later in the days now, getting going, but that's okay. We're settling into a groove. Uh, been waking up, you know, fairly late. Um, the thing is the days are super long here in July, you know, we have daylight out till 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. almost, and it's daylight 5 or 6 a.m. So it makes for a long day, you can get a lot of stuff done. So you don't have to get up at the break of dawn. Um, we try to go to bed where there's still a little bit of light left because we're zonked. So we're, uh, we're on Adventure Lake right now. We are going to pack up as we do. Um, I'm already halfway there. We're going to have for breakfast. We have a trout on the grill still that we couldn't eat last night. There was way, way too much food. So we're going to have that for breakfast. It's a beautiful morning here. We're overlooking the burn. All that's all burnt over here. And uh, on the other side, it's burnt as well. Looks like it's going to be a full sun today. Straight up. So we are going to pack up and we are going to leave to our next lake. Our next lake has lake trout as well. It'd be really, really nice to do a morning or, or evening fish on this lake. But, but, we are so busy last night. And, uh, you know, by your sixth day, you're kind of running out of energy and you want to enjoy everything. But at the same time, there are physical limitations to all that stuff, so you do need to get your sleep. And so we do sleep in a little bit more as things go on. But uh, that's what's the nice part about having a long trip here is you don't have to worry about too much about missing everything. So let's get some food. So I know there's a few of you out there who probably have left some food out overnight and you probably woke up and you're like, oh shoot, I forgot to put that in the fridge overnight. Is it good to eat anymore? Well, we have no fridge and we left our fish out overnight. It was 
somewhat on the heat, but of course the heat dies down. There's a fish tail. There's a fish head. And probably what is most exciting is the fish meat. And so that was sitting on the fire overnight and we are going to eat it this morning. All we're going to do is use the recook. It's probably been smoking for most of the night anyway. But that's a nice slab of meat. It's all that trout that we couldn't eat last night. It's nice and golden and smoked, well smoked now and uh, probably mostly cooked all the way through. At this point last night it was not quite there, but this morning for sure it's going to get there. So we are going to put that back on and let it warm up and we can have some warm smoke, smoked, almost fresh caught, pretty much we call it fresh caught from yesterday, lake trout. The side of fish brain maybe. Fish, fish head might not be so edible. All right, so that's our warmed up trout. Just to show you guys, that's 100% still edible. In fact, that's probably better than it was yesterday. Let's season with the adobo spice. That's, um, you could put that in the store. That's better than it was yesterday. It's almost as good as, uh, the rainbow trout actually on the wilderness living challenge season number one well smoked the only thing it's probably missing is alder we didn't have any alder around here to smoke it with so it's basically spruce smoke so it has a little bit of that sprucey taste to it that's an excellent piece of meat though if you serve this to a guest they would be happy to come again those bones you just pick them out Jeremy and I are going to really enjoy this. It's going to fuel us into our next lake for sure. Beautiful piece of meat. We just got the last few things to pack up here. And uh, we're heading off to Welkin from Adventure. And that's going to be our next stop. We're going to do one night there. There's supposed to be a uh, lake trout in it, but it doesn't seem like the type of lake that would be very productive for lake trout. So you might catch a couple, or might not. If not, we should be able to wrangle up some pike for dinner. So that'll be our target, um, that default. We haven't really had a um, big focus on pike because we can catch pike anytime we want back home. But the lake trout and the walleye are something that are a bit more difficult in our neck of the woods. So you got to kind of make the most of it when you're here. We've seen bears so far. We haven't seen a caribou yet. So that's on the list and the moose too. But we haven't been really traveling the route we wanted to because of the forest fires. So I think if we would have gone that route, we probably would have had a better chance of seeing all those different things, especially the moose. There's still a chance to it gets slimmer going this direction, but um, can't control mother nature. When uh, there's a forest fire, you can't paddle into it. Eight thirty AM and we're uh, already off to our next spot. It'll only take us probably a couple hours to get there. Yeah. Maybe no, maybe four. We have a couple of long portages, so Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. We're uh, making a little Doing a drive-by film shooting here. Yeah, we might get up on an eagle. Yeah. He did just make a little squawk there, so he's obviously thinking about us. What are we doing? Traveling we, to our next spot? Yeah, we can't resist the fish <laughs> on the way to the next spot. Yeah. Catch a laker on the way, man. Why not? All right, guys, if you're not familiar with uh, fishing with lake trout, or fishing for lake trout with lake trout, they don't, I don't think they want to fish with you, but I'll fish against you. Fish. Chair. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> so you just do that over there and you got a fish. You just drop down a white grub. Yeah. Jerry's got a... Jig. You got a white grub? Oh yeah, he's got a tube jig on. So he's tube jigging it. Bring him up slow because this one's getting released. Well, you should do it faster if it's getting released. Then, yeah, it doesn't wear him out. I thought you, it was something about the swim bladder in there. Oh, well, there's that too, but they're not deep. Like, we're in only 40 feet, so... Actually, not supposed to tire them out. 
Oh, okay. Because then they don't burn all their energy fighting and uh, exhaust them. Oh, he just uh, burped up all of his gases. Yeah, that was great. Oh, that's a better size one. Well, it's about the same. Oh yeah, he's hooked right through the roof of the mouth. That was a good hook set. That's see him? Yeah. Nice laker. Yeah. And he's going back for a swim. Have we ever done this before? Uh, released, released an edible fish? <laughs> no. Lots of pike. Yeah. On this trip, we've done a lot of catch and release pike, but catch and release lakers. So it's a 3 8 inch, probably that's that's a pretty size one, and uh, just a straight hook with a, a, a tube jig on there. And in typical Jeremy fashion, I have a whole bag of brand new ones, and this is the one I took out of the bag about eight years ago. <laughs> just had a good strike and I missed it. Chris had a good strike and he missed it, and then he hooked it on its second go. So they're... Oh, right at the boat here already. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see if we can get this guy in the net. Why not? Oh, oh, I oh, net him. oh! Hey, there we go. That's a nice trout. <laughs> oh, it's always a rush catching a trout. I don't know what it is, but a pike doesn't do it for me. But a trout <laughs> every time. That's a good size one. We could portage that one. <laughs> yeah, we could. It's up to you. I don't know if we can let them go. I don't know if I can. <laughs> it's too good eating to let a trout go. Yeah, it's hard to resist. It's not like a pike where at home you can just catch release pike all day, but a trout, like, to me is a prize. Yeah. And it's such good eating. Just to let it go after that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. I think we can lighten it up pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, get it out and we'll carry it in the food bag. It's food yeah. now. Yep. Just at the end of our drift here, eh? We are. We're in another little hole. Yeah, we were, it got a little bit shallower, like maybe 30 feet, and then it dropped 10. Oh, that it's was... a drag, drag puller. Yeah. Oh, look at that bend. Might pull out. Uh, not before you net him. Not before I net him. Nice. Nice. Nice Laker. Nice Laker. Back in the drink? Yeah. When was the last time you released a Laker? <laughs> Never. Yeah. All right, here she goes. First time for everything. Goodbye, Trudy Trout. So for these Lakers out Woodland Caribou Provincial Park, all we're doing is dropping down hit bottom. It's uh, 40 feet here about, but you can get Lake Trout into 80 feet. Uh, which is pretty tricky to do if you're trolling on if it's a super super windy day But you drop off down to the bottom uh, and just jig jig up and then try to keep tension with your line all the time So feel it drop and then if you feel any kind of twitch or bump or bang just sat right away because they'll spit it So that's all we're doing and if it's a really really windy day uh, we've casted uh, into the wind and then drift back and then that'll drop your bait a little bit lower, but it's really tricky. So we're actually, we're taking advantage of fishing on this lake while it's it, we're able to get down to the bottom. Um, you don't need anything fancy to do it. And a lot of people won't fish for a lake trout in a canoe. And I can understand why in some lakes that are fished out, you won't get those fish into the 40 foot range, but uh, these lakes seem to be full of them. We're having no problem catching fish, as is all the lakes in Woodland Caribou. So if you're gonna come out, have a look. This is the place to do it. If you want to catch fish and eat fish like we're doing every day, this is the place to do it. The right side of the canoe is just as lucky as the left side. <laughs> Got that tube jig on again. It's been, what, eight minutes? Well, second drift. Second drift. Yeah, look at him burping up his water. Or his air. This one's a bit bigger than the last one. Look at his back. This one's got bit by somebody. Much, much bigger fish. Oh, oh you lost him. Catch and release. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? I wonder if that'll show on the camera. He had uh, damage on his back. Like yeah. Fresh this, scars. This one does. The one I caught does too. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're getting bit by each other. Yeah. yeah I wonder. All, all the time. Or by bigger ones. And then you're just riding it back down. Jig yep. up. 
ride it back down and any bump set like that <laughs> it'd be funny if you snap your line <laughs> yeah On our first portage here, out of adventure, Jerry found a little treasure. Mint. Mint, what are you gonna do with it? Brush your teeth? Crush it all up and you put it in my armpits. <laughs> We've, I've tried Voyager's to make- Voyager's deodorant. Yeah, tried to make mint uh, fish before, it tastes like mm. toothpaste. Yeah, we'll just boil, boil some water, pour it on and have mint tea. Mint tea? Yeah. Cool. That'd be all right. What does it look like? It's got the purple flowers, so there's a similar minty plant down there with white flowers that does not smell good no so you just pick the ones that smell like mint yeah and you should be good if not don't blame me yeah or us yeah they smell real good id your own damn plants that's right or let jeremy id them he'll take all the liability on his own, <laughs> on his own channel and jeremy is taking advantage of my vlogging to eat berries oh yeah there's berries absolutely everywhere so this is the time to be in the park if you like to eat the berries and we're in the old burn. We're still in the burn here. Here, I'm gonna drop you down. Drop down, check that out. These are littered with blueberries, more than you could ever eat. So over my shoulder is all burn. It's all burned here. I'll eat some blueberries and some blueberry leaves to go with it. Get the much needed fiber. This is a shorter portage, two, 300, something like that, meters. She just loosely translate to 300 steps. This part of the park's all burnt. All burnt. Are we getting used to portaging? Yep. Yes, but we're tired. Yeah, <laughs> used to it, but tired. We could probably do this all day, every day. Till your joints blow out. Well, yeah, you need to have a pace, right? Like. Well, for two people who don't do this stuff, as long as you're physically fit and you want to do it, if you don't want to do it, plan not to do it because you will not enjoy doing it. If you don't like doing work, you won't enjoy doing lots of portages. But if you have a high pain tolerance and you do endurance running, <laughs> I don't really feel like it, 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 I don't feel it's painful because I, I played sports my whole life. So I would, I would live for the high, right? Yeah. And, uh, well, and that's part of it is like, you don't have yeah. to like work to come out here. You just have to just, it's like work and reward, right? You have to appreciate the balance. Well, you have to appreciate that this is a reward. The yep. journey is a reward. If you don't, if you just want to relax, just sit on yeah. the lake. Or, and do uh, little day trips. Don't carry all your shit because you won't, you won't enjoy it. Strike that balance when you plan your trip and you'll be all right. And uh, pack as light as you humanly possibly can if you plan on doing lots of portaging yeah. or portaging for my American friends, which is most of you. So we were coming up the lake this way. If you notice the wind is coming this way. And then we noticed this section here was all matted down, which is kind of odd because nobody had paddled that section. So unless somebody came in from the opposite way and matted all this down, but then we found some more evidence over here to show you. Actually, there's another spot here. It's the first one here. There's a stinky turd there and you can hear all the flies buzzing around it. And I was standing here and I said, uh, something smells like rotten fish. And so I opened the fish bag and took the fish bag out. Uh, we had that trout still. And uh, it didn't smell, it was fine. And Jeremy's dog, oh, it's the fish. I'm like, no, my nose don't lie. It's gotta be something else. And then we found this. That is a fresh poop with berries in it and all sorts of other junk. There's flies all over it. And then if you do some more detective work, you'll find a pathway leading up here 
and some spray in the leaves all mud wet mud spray all the way up here and then another poop here so you guys have any guesses as to what that might be i do so we're headed this way after smelling a wind probably a bear as we're coming down the lake on this side the bear would have spotted us and then it would have bolted up the hill there's a bear nearby in other words but it was more scared of us it's pretty much the the way it goes for bears so they're around right now but uh they're pretty scared of you anyway so no worries pretty good abundance of berries we've been making do making do making use of them i should say and uh because there's so many of them i've developed a new picking technique it's called um just non-skilled something like a bear would do so they might grab everything including the unriped ones and leaves um you just pop them in their mouth except they're not using their hands they're using their mouth so you can imagine they're probably getting leaves and all sorts of things in there so we had done a calculation that it would take 18 kilograms or pounds 26 pounds 26 pounds of blueberries to make a go of a day to get your calories out of it here you could probably pick that many and eat that many but i'm not sure you want to pound that many through your body but how primitive people used to live they would or not even primitive people but just earlier versions of us a couple of years ago 100 years ago and have taken mountains of these and dried them out I and mean, then you probably could have eaten the equivalent amount or eat them in pemmican or something like that all winter long there's so many berries here that there's no way they'll be depleted and see just in this short period of time i'll collect a few handfuls of berries jeremy likes to pick very meticulously oh i'm still eating a few green ones are you uh -huh. You get so many more blueberries if you just jam them all in there. Your tongue actually gets kind of good at sorting them out. Yeah, spit out the greens? I remember pretty distinctly when my kid was two, my son, just little, and we had him in the blueberry pot. And he just was eating like a bear, just shoveling berries in his mouth with all the leaves and everything. Chew, 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 and then he went... <laughs> and all the leaves came out <laughs> he just sorted them out in his mouth so jeremy's out of water and the berries didn't do the trick on hydration he feels like you need some more um to actually digest them like you need liquid to digest your food kind of thing um but he ran out a long time ago i've got some really smoky water that jeremy didn't want to drink and i don't want to drink either so if you want it you can have it it's very smoky because uh filter the water filter's not working too good. So we've had to boil some and some of it just probably sat on the fire way too long. So it's smoky and gross. Smokiest water I've had in a long time. And I've used to boil, well, I've never owned a water filter. So that's probably, you know, it's pretty normal for me to have smoky water, but that's pretty bad stuff. Anyway, we're on the, uh, we're calling it Wilson Lake cause Welkin's too hard to remember. Um, it's burnt out all the way around and uh we do have an option just to go right back to wrist it's another 300 meter we did a 375 ish a 650 a 675 so adding a 300 on top of it to get some shade might be worth it because my arms are red so there's a forest fire flared up again it was dead for the last little bit that uh that there is not a cloud that's actual fire and we're headed in this direction. There's a waterfall we're trying to get to. Jeremy uh, said we had to go three, three and a half kilometers and then he said we had to go four and a half kilometers. So it seems like we're going backwards or well, we're definitely not going backwards. And then he said there's a part of the map that's missing or so he says. I switched pages on the map <laughs> so there was a little section that I missed or that's not on the two, in between the two. <clears throat> So we got a ways to go. We're on uh, kind of a river. I guess it's a river. They say it's a river or a creek. And then we'll hop over back. Oh, we did decide to go straight to Wrist now, I think. Because it's all burnt here. There's no place to hide. One, two, three, go. One, two. So this is our waterfall that we're looking for the whole time. It's not super big. And the pool behind us isn't super big either. So that's our last portage, portage for the day. Or portage, if you prefer. If you're French, you say portage. And then you won't get in trouble for saying it any other way. So we're through. 
we are back in the Wrist Lake system. So we're going to have a look at the first campsite offered to us at this creek end. If that doesn't work, well it should work, there shouldn't be anybody there but you never know. We suspect there's probably somebody at the spot we stayed at when we got dropped off because it's probably the best spot on the whole lake. And it's about another two kilometers past. We already got to go two kilometers, so that'd be four total. It's probably about ten in a paddling. Four and a half K on foot, three K with gear. It's a lot, that's a lot, plus all the paddling. And we still caught a trout this morning. So let's go see if we can cook that one up. Maybe we'll catch another one. What, you want me to say something? No, I just want you to walk. Oh, you want me to be haggard or walk? Just so we can see how steep this trail is. Oh, all right, I'll walk then. On the map, this is listed as a falls. But what we can see is mostly a series of riffles at this time of year. It might be, it might be a falls at another time of year. This is what I feel like doing at the end of this day. Oh, just laying flat on this rock. Oh, that's good for my back. <sighs> Didn't honestly think I could go that far or would want to. But I did two heavy packs each time and once without anything. And all the paddling. Paddling I knew I could do. Portaging is something that's new for me. I mean, we dragged canoes into lakes before. It would be put and put and stay, drag out, stay. And so we're used to that. We'd do like one or two nights in a spot. That was all good. This looks kind of cool. Looks like I'm hanging on the side of a cliff. All right, guys, that was a pretty brutal day. We started off on Adventure Lake this morning. We did real well for ourselves though. We caught, um, well, we caught and kept one lake trout. Uh, you let one go. Yeah. I let, let one, one go. go. And I lost another one at the boat. Right. So we had four fish on adventure before we even took off this morning, which was awesome. Um, we kept one. Uh, Jeremy's going to make a curry dish with it. Curry fish noodle something something. Yeah. I'll do a whole video about it. Yeah. So that should be good. Um, we still have our fish with us. We didn't even eat our fish on the way. We, we stopped and ate a lot of berries, piles of blueberries, which is great. Um, but the big story is that we're thirsty like crazy because our water filter is still not working. I had a liter. You had a liter. A liter. And Jeremy actually drank some water out of the lake. Yeah, about a liter. A liter out of the lake. So we'll, we'll see if he gets to Giardia. They'll have to give us an update on that. Yeah. Um, all in all, in all, we paddled. Um, I don't know. What do we paddle? A lot. Well, miles, <laughs> miles yeah. and miles. We paddled. Well, what time did we leave at? I think we stopped fishing at nine thirty. Nine thirty till what six? And then we got here at six thirty. <laughs> That's a lot. And we traveled the entire time. We didn't really take any breaks. This is nine hours of travel. Nine hours. So that's that's a pretty good testament as to how fit we are now and how in shape we are for doing this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Fishy. Oh, dirty. It's funny. It wasn't even in the water. Oh, but barely in the water. Look at that turtle. <laughs> Stealing our fish. Ah, he's got a nose for it. Look at him. Yeah. He can him. smell the fish through the bag. Well, the bag is a couple little holes, but. Even still. What a jerk. Now we've got turtle bit trout. Good thing he made a little bit of a noise. We should eat him. <laughs> How many cowards in that guy? That turtle is probably. couple decades older than you are anyway. Look at that, he's gonna come right up for it. I feel like my toes are at risk. Because they're right here. You cheeky turtle. I don't know 
how much definition you're gonna see. Oh, that's good enough. Look at that, that's a pot of noodles. Oh. Some lake trout. Jeremy ate most of the cheesy bits because I can't eat too much cheesy bits. So I think there's some cottage cheese in mine probably. Should be all right. I can eat a little bit of cheese, not too much, you know. Cottage cheese curry, it's got the curry flavor in there. And coconut uh, mm -hmm. mi milk. Yeah, to simmer the fish. Coconut milk, simmered lake trout, and curry uh, flavor packet. Jeremy owes a big thank you to me for keeping the trout. Dude, <laughs> and yeah. I and think I carried it the whole way though. You did? Yeah. You did? Otherwise we'd be eating noodles for dinner. And then we would have broken our streak of eating fish twice a day. I'll thank Jeremy for making me carry, me carry the coconut milk and curry <laughs> All the way around the park, back to this location, but we didn't know we were coming back here. But it was totally worth it. Next time we're not bringing cans of anything, we're too heavy. Why are you so heavy? Um, if you want to come out here and catch fish all day long, you need fish more than twice a day, or twice a day, or once a day, or not at all, but catch and release, give uh, Red Lake Outfitters a call. Let him know you watched this video and that's why you decided to do a trip out here because as I've been saying, he wants to know that sponsoring us to come out and do this is working and if you mention this video in my name, he'll know that it's safe to invite us out here again to do it. At this point the numbers are insane, I don't even know what they mean anymore and I've talked to Jeremy about that, I don't know what. You know, at the time of this video, it's 300,000 subscribers. I don't know how many people that is. I have no concept of it. I don't think most people alive really do. He's saying he's really bad at math. <laughs> no, it's just that, you know as what I mean. As soon as he has to count past his fingers, <clears throat> it's all gibberish. How many people is that all in one room? I know, like, well, it's we grew insane. up in a city. Well, you grew up in a small town. Yeah. I grew up in a small town. The city, the big city next to us was 50,000. Yeah, I mean, that's like all that at once. six times the city that I grew up in. It's hard to picture that many people yeah, at it's once. A, that, it's this insane amount of people. It's this insane reach. I don't even know what to do with it. I just hope you guys are getting something positive out of it. And as goofy as I am sometimes, it's, uh, you know, I hope you're getting the positive message. You know, the growing and the pushing yourself and doing something constructive. Even, it, even though it's goofy, sometimes it's goofy. Um, it's not meant to be disrespectful, it's just because I don't take myself that seriously. And I think you have a better and easier time in life if you can take a joke, even about yourself, right? So if yeah. you guys are, and if you're around other people, they're gonna rib you. So, anyway. Oh yeah, like that time I had fished you. <laughs> that one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should write down how many times you had fished me. I think yeah. two, maybe twice. <clears throat> out of I don't really actually <laughs> I don't know. It's like the one time my wife was um, caught me being wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's so funny she can't remember the time. Hmm. <laughs> She's like, I, you're wrong sometimes, I know. Because I remember one time you were wrong. I'm like, what time was that? And she can't remember no. the time. <laughs> she can't remember hmm. what I was wrong about. Anyway, sometimes it's fun to be. She should have wrote it down. She should have wrote it down. Just keep a list. Well, there would be only one item. So, you can subscribe or not, I don't care. Subscribe to Jeremy, he cares. He needs more subscribers. Only like five or six of them. You can unsubscribe from my channel and subscribe to his if you want. <laughs> I probably won't, Sub -swap. Even, won't even notice. <laughs> but I do care that you guys are around. So, there's that. It's not that I don't care that you're not subscribed. I don't care for me if you subscribe. I don't do these videos so that I have a pile of subscribers. You watch the video right to the end, right full stop.